Okay. So let's start with our today's tutorial. It's a very short tutorial, actually. It's a very short tutorial with a lot of theories, actually. And uh, most of the theory, you actually seen it before in your other unit, maybe in your intro to finance or in your other finance uh, units. So let's look at the first question here. Uh, chapter one, introduction to investment and finance world. Who owns a corporation? Describe the process whereby the owners control the firm's management. What is the main reason that an agency relationship exists in corporate form of organization? In this context, what kind of problem can arise? So let's tackle one by one on each of the questions in question one. So who owns a corporation? So everyone knows. Shareholder. Okay. Shareholders are the owners of corporation. So... They ask us to describe the process whereby the owners control the firm management. So shareholder usually will elect one of them to be in the management. He's either going to be the director, he's going to be the CEO, or who, whoever, lah, whatever management roles that they could assign their shareholders into the board. Okay, so... You see, one of the biggest, one of those bigger shareholders in the corporation will usually be the board of directors and they are the management of the company. All right. Some companies will somehow <coughs> outsource the CEO position to external, um, to external people. So, for example, in Malaysia, the recent news, which is Vincent Tan, stepped down from the CEO position. So he is the owner and he stepped down from the CEO position. So the CEO position is opened up for an external party. Okay. So next, related to the questions again, what is the main reason that an agency relationship exists in corporate form of organization? So agency relationship means they are talking about agency problem. So I guess you guys are very familiar with agency problem. Agency problem is basically the conflict of interest between staff and owners. Okay, my favorite example on this conflict of interest will best be described with, uh, with this example uh, that I'm going to tell you soon. So, imagine if you guys are a chicken rice store owner. Okay, your operating hours is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you are the one that's running the stores at 5 p.m., if you still have chickens, you still can sell chicken rice, and yet there are customers coming in, will you run your business or will you close your business at then? Will you continue selling or will you close your shop if you are the owner running the shop at the moment? We'll continue selling. Pardon? We'll continue selling. Continue selling, right? Okay. So the the proper way or the uh, correct goals that will be the owner will continue selling the chicken rice. Why? Because your goal is to gain more profit. So you see customer coming and you're you're not sold out yet. So why not continue operation? But if you outsource the handling of your store to another person, that means you hire a staff. To work for you from eight to five. Okay, so this guy or this girl will be allocated to work for you from eight to five p.m. and then five p.m. he or she finish his work or her work and they can go back. So if at five p.m. someone came in, will he or she continue selling chicken rice or not? What are the odds that he or she will continue selling? Very low, right? Okay. The, pop, the probability of the person continue selling is very low. The most also, it will be selling past a little bit, but not continuously. Okay? So this itself already show a conflict of interest. Okay? Between a staff and the owner. This happens very often in corporate, in the corporate world. In big organization especially, where the CEO will have their own direction and ambition, which divert in off from their owners or from the shareholders. Okay? All right. So this is basically a simple uh, simple elaboration on 
uh, agency problems and what kind of agency problem could arise in an organization when there's a conflict of interest, conflict of uh, goals, conflict of ambitions. Okay. So by the way, uh, I conduct my uh, tutorial according according to more uh, of uh, real life experience and relate to uh, examples and uh, cases here. So I will not really exactly give you the textbook answer. Okay, that most likely gonna be uploaded on the times by your uh, module leader. So no point of me uh, replicating those generic answers or definition answers from the textbook. So I'll try to give you more scenario based kind of uh, case and uh, scenario so that you can relate it to the theory and the framework. All right, hopefully that will not, uh, will not, what do you call that, will not affect the tutorial sessions. So if any students feel that uh, they are not comfortable with this uh, delivery method, you may always voice it out to me. Or if you think that I'm speaking too fast or I'm, uh, uh, I'm too into myself and forgotten about you guys, you may always stop me via the Zoom chat. Please let me know. You can always notify me there. Okay, you can just drop a message there. Sir, you're too fast. Sir, can you stop down? Can okay, you slow down? Sir, can you get back into uh, the theory section? I don't want you to tell me grandfather story and so on and so forth. Be very honest. Don't be afraid. Okay, I don't bite. I don't bite. All right, if you have any issues, please let me know. So, so far, is there any issues with the delivery method? Anything that you want to voice it out to me? Any comments or any feedback that you want to give it to me? Anyone? Any response, please? No, sir. All right, now. Nah? Okay. So I see some of you responded still all right. Uh, and some of you answered me also. So that's good. So if anyone feel that there's any issues, please let me know. I will go on to the next question. So the first one we are done. Basically talking about agency problem. Okay, it's very straightforward. This question is even something I think that you did before in Intro to Finance if you did take that unit. So come to the next question here. In recent years, large financial institutions, okay, such as mutual funds and pension funds. So I'm on to this sentence. Mutual funds and pension funds. All right, you know, pension funds are basically the retirement funds of the citizens. Mutual funds are safe investment, low risk investment. Okay, so financial institutions such as mutuals and pension funds have become the dominant owner of share in the US. So now they are the major purchaser or shareholder of the US shares. So these institutions are becoming more active in corporate affairs now. So what are the implications of these trends for agency problem and corporate control? So basically, they are, they are telling us the situation where mutual funds and pension funds, financial institutions are becoming more and more active in the uh, US stock market or in the US shares. Okay, so does this make an effect to the agency problem or not? Will agency problem goes up or goes down? That's the main concern here. So as you know, agency problem is conflict of interest. Okay, so all these financial institutions which control low risk investment and also the citizens retirement fund, do you think that they dare to take extreme risks, all right, or divert their goal extreme from the investors or not? Extremely from the investor or not? The answer to this is no. Okay, they understand well that they are managing very safe funds here which is the citizen's money. So in that sense, they will reduce agency problem for sure. Okay, they'll make sure that their goal is aligned to their investors to prevent conflict of interest, to prevent taking unnecessary risk and losing the citizen's money. So when they are taking over may, uh, the uh, major share of the US market, they are actually reducing agency problem and increase corporate control all right so but this is not final huh? this is not perfectly how it happens okay there is still a slight 
probability or possibility that there's a agency problem because mutual funds and pension funds are managed by who? Fund managers. Okay, fund managers might have a bigger risk on a uh, bigger risk or uh, bigger uh, risk appetite here on their investment choices. So they might put their own interests or own goals into the funds that they are managing. So at this moment, there's a possibility of agency problem arising. But in general, if a financial institutions who control mutual funds and pension funds, they will definitely reduce agency problem and at the same time increase corporate control. But taking into consideration, the individual who manage the mutual fund and pension funds are fund managers. They themselves also might cause a slight agency problem there. But it's rare. Lah. Okay? This is quite rare because usually the institution will control. They'll make sure that all the fund managers will be aligned to the company goals. Okay? Does that make sense to you or not? Can relate, cannot relate. Can, huh? Can, cannot. Mm, no response. Don't know if you understand or not. Thanks, can, very good. Thanks, Lin, for responding at least. Okay, I can hear some, someone uh, talking as well. So... Good to know that you guys are here with me. All right. So let's move on to the next question here. Okay. We can imagine the financial manager doing several things on behalf of firm stockholders, for example. So FM represents stockholders to do certain things. So A, written here is make shareholders wealthier. Okay, make shareholders wealthy. B, modify the firm's investment plan. Okay, or modify investment plan. C, uh, assess investors' risk appetite. And B, balance checkbook. Okay, so these are some of the tasks that financial manager will represent stockholders to complete. Okay, the question here asks, but in well-functioning capital market, shareholders will vote, will vote for only one of these goals. Why? Okay, so out of all these four, which one will most likely be shareholders' priority when the financial uh, what the financial manager should do on behalf of them? Okay, to answer this question, it's very simple. A. Why A? Okay, why A? Huh? Okay, all of you say A. Why A? Come. Why do shareholders want financial manager to make them wealthy? But not the rest. Why is it so important? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, no one responds. I respond for you, huh? So the reason why do they want to rely on FM to solve this issue for them? Okay, because they expect the expertise from a financial manager to make them wealthy. And being wealthy is one of the most important. Thing that this shareholder wanted to. So it's no issue. Shareholder can modify their own investment plan themselves. They could assess investor risk appetite themselves too. Okay, what are their own risk appetite? They know what, whether they are a risk adverse person or a risk taker person. They can justify it themselves. They don't need you to justify for them. Okay, and lastly, they can definitely balance their own checkbook without you telling them. So the much more important task that they want a financial manager to do it for them is to make them wealthy. Okay? Is to make them wealthy. Alright? So simple as that. 
Okay, simple, very easy. Okay, moving on here. Why would one expect managers to act in shareholders' interest? Give some reason. So this question is basically telling you how come shareholder could rely on a uh, financial manager to, to execute things for them. Are they not afraid? Are they not uh, worried? Okay. So these are some of the reasons here to support this statement. Number one, a financial manager need to protect which question? Shareholders' wealth. Okay. So the question asked here, they tell you, we can imagine the financial manager doing several things on behalf of the uh, stockholders or shareholders. For example, this false statement here. Okay. So a financial manager could actually help to make the shareholders wealthier. All right. They could also help the uh, firm's investment plan to help shareholders to achieve a particular pattern of consumption. So that means modify the investment plan on behalf of the clients. Next, assess the investor's risk appetite. And lastly, help to balance the checkbook of the investor. So in a situation when the capital market is well functioning, so this shareholder prioritized on which task that he or she wanted the FM to do it for them. So definitely going to be A, okay? Because the rest of these three, they can do it themselves. As simple as that. Okay, investor can handle this themselves without any uh, rocket science or any, uh, any complications at all. All right? Okay? But if he's in the down period, of course, they expect the uh, financial manager to do all this in, on behalf of them. But when it's a well-functioning capital market, they want to be wealthier. So they just want their FM to focus on this point. Sufficient. The rest, they can do it themselves. That's what the questions mean. Can? Clear now, Swati? Yes, sir. Okay. So moving on to the next one that I telling I was talking about just now uh, regarding the, the trust. Okay, uh, why would one expect managers to act in shareholder interest? Why would we want to trust an external person to have the same interest as us, an investor here? So very simple. There's a reputation to there's a reputation. Okay. FM need to protect, okay, or financial managers need to protect their reputations. These reputations are built from their years of portfolio. <clears throat> uh, less reputable uh, financial manager will be less likely be given a bigger amount to manage. They're usually being given a tiny, a small amount of money to be invested. But if, if, you are a reputable financial manager. There are lots of lots of people are willing to give you their portfolio to be managed. Okay? And this link to number two. All right. Management compensation. Is usually... Tied to earnings and stock price. So this is relatable to the first statement just now. Why would financial manager want to maintain their reputation and portfolio? Because the bigger the portfolio they handle, the more money they handle, the higher chance of them getting a bigger pay as management compensation. Because when you manage a big portfolio or small 10% earning, okay, or a small increment of the stock price will be reflected on the financial manager account because they will receive this as management compensation according to a certain percentage. In other words, we can call these commissions. And these commissions are basically based on the earning that they manage the portfolio from. That's why it's very important for them to maintain their reputation 
so they can get big portfolios then they can earn more okay number three fund managers or all these financial managers are being supervised okay by board of directors and also their own peer okay their own peers will be monitoring them to make sure that they are not running out of the uh, alignment of goal with the investors and lastly something that they are afraid of the threat of takeover so this is related to number two and number one again as you know the better reputation they have the bigger portfolio they will have and the bigger portfolio of have the earnings that they gain will be bigger commissions okay so when they are managing such a big portfolio there are so many people are waiting to take over their job so they need to do a good job if not people could just change fund manager anytime okay they could just change anytime they can choose someone better than you anytime not right because it's their money they won't want to mess with it they wouldn't want you to mess it up for them all right so these are some of the uh, simple theories or uh, simple uh, uh what do you call it introductions about what the financial manager will do why are they being trusted to do certain things and so on and so forth okay so the upcoming two questions that we'll cover will be relating to the cfa standards of practice handbook all right so you will be much more assistance uh, much more helpful if you have the handbook with you to look at the standards and to look at what are the issues here they are talking about so i wouldn't write much here so i will explain these uh, cases with you guys verbally okay so hope that you could listen and uh, follow me closely so let's look at question number one here mike's firm's advertiser my firm advertiser its parts performance record by showing the 15 year return of a composite of client accounts <clears throat> might discover however that the composite omits the performance of account that have left the firm during the 15 years period whereas the description of the composite indicates the inclusion of all firm accounts so based on this par uh, paragraph mind's firm is trying to make an advertisement based on past performance record for the past 15 years consists of a group of client accounts okay then might found out that some of these account that used to to compile okay for the past 15 years some of the account is already uh not there already non-existence anymore but it's still being taken into consideration <coughs> or they already terminate their services but still is under the compilation of all the accounts okay this omission has led to an inflated performance figure mike is asked to use promotional material that includes the erroneous performance number when soliciting business for the firm so mike is in charge on doing the advertisement okay and because of the compilation of those accounts even though some of the account is already missing shows very good performance figure here okay so the company asked mike to use this good performance to secure more investors also to, to get more uh businesses okay so based on the cfa standard of practice handbook how are you gonna uh, comment about this case okay so first of all which violation that uh might might violated if he conducted the advertisement all right so if mike conducted the advertisement he will be violating standard 1a yep okay so standard 1a is basically misrepresenting performance okay 
uh, or misinterpretation of performance or monopolizing usage of performance. All right. So although Mike is not the one that compiled the performance table, but he is directly associated to the company's activity if he were to use the material as an advertising media. Okay, so what should Mike do then? Very simple. First, to solve this issue, Mike would want to find out who is the one that compiled this performance table, talk to them, inform them to see are they aware about the situation. If this does not go as well, what Mike should do is to update his direct superior and worst case scenario, might need to compile a complaint to the compliance department for further investigation. Okay. Might must not use any of this material for promotional uh, purposes. Okay. If he, if after he, even after he informing the company and so and so, the company decided to push him to continue using the material, Mike might want to consider to quit his job because this will affect his CFA qualification somehow if he has one and this is considered as unethical too. So if case gone worse, he might even get into a lawsuit. Okay, and he's the one that in charge of promoting it. So the, cow, the company will definitely push him to take responsibility and he will be in huge trouble. Uh, these are some of the uh, real case. Uh, these are some of the scenario that he might face if he did not take action correctly. Although he's just representing the company. Okay, can get it, huh? So it's quite straightforward, actually. It's uh, actually also very common sense, uh, to to see the logic of this. All right. So any questions so far? No, no response, I assume no. Okay, no question, very good. So moving on, the second CFA question here. The second one here, the story sounds like this. Kevin Scott manages the portfolio of James Tavin, uh, a client of Bolton Investments. Kevin achieves an annual return for Stavin that is consistently better than that of the benchmark. She and the client previously agreed to. As a reward, Stavin offered Kevin's two ticket to Wimbledon and the use of Stavin's service apartment in London for a week for free. Kevin is in dilemma on whether to accept Stavin's offer or not. He is considering of informing his supervisor about Stavin's offer. If he accepts Stavin's offer, he is afraid that she must maintain the annual. He is afraid that she must maintain the annual return, which is higher than the normal benchmark. Uh, a bit confusing, uh, sometimes he, sometimes she. So I think this is a question issue. Lah. So we ignore that. All right. So what you need to do is, based on this above scenario, discuss on what Kevin Scott, an employer, should do by applying the CFA standard of practice. So this is very obvious, the case of uh, bribery. You're afraid of the case of bribery. It could be related to bribery cases. All right. So this Kevin guy is managed to make a lot of money for James Stavin, uh, more than the initial benchmark, okay, that they agreed to. So Stavin is very happy with this and offer uh, Kevin two tickets to Wimbledon and also a stay at his apartment. All right, this Kevin person is actually in dilemma instead. All right, but right, there shouldn't be any dilemma, okay? When you see this kind of offer, you know it's unethical to accept, you should just reject it. Okay, so he consider of informing it to his supervisor. He shouldn't consider. He must inform the supervisor. Okay, if he did not inform to the supervisor, no one knows about this situation. And if anything goes wrong, he will be suspected on accepting bribery. And he will be in huge trouble. Okay, so in this case, in this case, if Kevin accepts the gift, he will automatically violate standard 4B. What is standard 4B? All right. 
Basically, standard 4B is accepting the gift from one of his client. So there are two offers here. So either of the offer he accept, he already violated this standard. Okay? All right. Because in the CFA standard, accepting gift will actually affect the, uh, the, the behavior of an investor. All right. So this, this person is actually being uh, uh, tempted by, uh, by a certain uh, pulls, or we call it gifts, that uh, trigger he or she to perform better. So that is uh, unethical in the way. All right. So Kevin must also okay, inform the supervisor so that this situation could be monitored. And this could actually guard him in case of any future happening okay or in case of any misunderstanding happening in the future all right okay and the best practice that the uh, that kevin scott and their uh, and the employer should do is to continue monitoring the transaction costs on stevin's account and uh, other account that being managed by kevin okay just this is just to assure there is no hanky panky going on <laughs> Okay, so these are some of the solution here. So it's a big, huge problem when it comes to uh, uh, official corporates and in commercial line, when bribery and gift could be a huge misunderstanding. So it's not a, it's not a something glad if you are someone offer you a gift or offer you a holiday package or whatsoever. If you are in the investment line, okay, it's best for you to stay professional, manage the account. And just gain your commissions based on that. You'll be sufficient. Any extra gifts or encouragement is uh, considered as bribery. All right. I hope this gives you some insight about how the CFA standard works and what are the uh, uh, what are the things that you should do and not uh, not do do and don'ts in the uh, CFA handbook. So it's best for you to have a set of this uh, knowledge in case in futures that you are doing any CFA or you're going to be an investment banker or whatsoever, you know that you shouldn't cross the line. All right. So that's basically the amount of tutorial questions I'm assigned to discuss with you all. Okay. So, so far, do you have any questions or any doubt? Or you think that... Uh, I'm speaking too fast or whatsoever. <laughs>